Hello everyone. Welcome to the Earth Science Reference Table Review video series for the Regents exam. So we already um, talked about properties of water, specific heat of common materials, and some equations. And today we're going to look at the radioactive decay data table. So first of all, what is radioactive means? Radioactive elements, as you can see, there are carbon, potassium, uranium, rubidium. They actually release nuclear particles and energy. And they become a non-radioactive element. For example, you can see carbon-14, it becomes nitrogen. Okay? And this process is called the disintegration. As you can see the name of the column. Potassium, you can see it becomes, it may become um, two different non radioactive elements. Okay? And there is one more important thing that you need to know is half life. So, what is half life actually means? Half life means the time it takes for half of the radioactive element to disintegrate. So let's uh, look at the details of what's happening actually. So we're going to look at this one. So what's happening here? So we know that carbon will become nitrogen. Okay. So initially we have carbon 14 which is an isotope and it will become nitrogen okay so initially we have 100 percent carbon 14 and zero percent nitrogen okay after the first half-life which you can see is 5.7 10 to the power 3 so what is that so if we break it down uh, 5.7 10 to the power 3 this really means 5.7 is multiplied by 10 times 10 times 10 that is 10 to the power 3 if you do the multiplication you will get 5700 years which is the half-life that means after 5700 years 50 percent of the carbon will lose its radioactivity and 50 percent will become non-radioactive element nitrogen okay so that's uh, after the first half-life okay what will happen if we consider another half-life which is called the second so remember after the first half-life you have 50 percent now another half-life means this will become 25 percent and this will gain that 25 percent and will become 75 percent so that means after the second half life remember the first half life uh, it was 5700 years that means after the second half you have to add another 5700 so if you add them you will get 11,400 years so that means after the second half it's going to take 11,400 years and so on. That means another one, if you're considering another half-life, this will be 12.5%. Uh, okay, and this will become 87.5% after the third half-life and so on. Okay, so I hope that uh, this make makes sense to you. So let's uh, look at uh, regions questions actually. So let me show you two questions quickly. 
So, question number five. You can see an archaeologist found an ancient skeleton estimated to be 10,000 to 25,000 years old. Which radioactive isotope would be most useful for finding the age of the skeleton? So if we look at the reference table, you can see carbon-14, it's, it's good for elements that are, as you can see, the first half-life is 5,700, and then it will be 11,400, and then the next one it will be 22,800, and so on. But if we look at potassium, it starts from a billion. Okay, so if something, let's say you found a rock, and it's very old, it contains potassium or uranium. So in that case, it is better to use potassium or uranium. But if it's only 25,000 years old, then we have to use carbon-14. Okay, all right, now let's look at question number six. So which graph best represents the radioactive decay of uranium-238 into lead-206? So that's the third one, uranium-238. And it's becoming lead. PB is actually filling your lead. Okay, so we already know that the uranium it's going to lose its radioactivity. See? So first one is actually showing you that it's decreasing, it's losing its radioactivity. But if we look at 4 and 3, you'll see this is inaccurate. 3 is inaccurate because after only second half-life, it's becoming very close to 0, which is not correct. So only we have one and two. So one is actually saying that uranium is decreasing, but two is saying that nope, uranium is increasing. So that means the answer choice is one. Okay? So that's uh, all about radioactive decay data. So I hope you understand half-life disintegration and the elements that are changing and becoming um, non-radioactive elements all right so that's it for today everyone i'll see you next time with another topic thank you bye